Hi, it's Jen and Tammy back, continuing with the Wooly Mug Mat Series. This is our project for April. Yep. We started this off in March, where we went through everything in we detail. Did. Great detail. So right away, you've got a lot of stitching planned for us today. I do. So what I'll be doing is very briefly touching on our process and handing it over to Tammy because Perfect. she's got a lot to show us today, even some new things she's using today. Um, but at the end of this video, if you want to know each of these elements in detail, you'll be able to click on the Wooly Mug mat for March and be able That's to right. say it, see it in much more detail. Mm -hmm. But just for, for time's sake, we'll kind of just briefly touch on that. Now, this the mats are following on after the mug rug, rug. series. <laughs> yes, I have right. to really right. think about that every time. <laughs> and we did, again, bunnies for yep. that series. We still have kits available. In fact, we keep remaking those kits. They're super because cute. Because they're super popular. And who doesn't love a bunny for I April? I mean, that's I just it. what you do. It's cute. So if you want to be able to do this project, of course, we do have kits available. And when you buy the kit, all of these things, the diagrams and whatnot are included. I'll come but if you're going to be using your wool from home, for example, You'll want to make sure that you download both pages. This is the Wooly Mug Mat for April. We have a tracing diagram as well as a layout diagram yep. available for you. Um, you could get that link either if you're watching from the Shabby Fabrics actually on our website. Uh, there'll be a link right under the video. Just click that. You can download that or uh, go to the very bottom of the home page. There's a link that says free downloads. Click that. You'll see the Wooly Mug Map for April and so many other projects. Lots if you're not already projects. subscribed, just do it. Absolutely. Tammy and I are always brainstorming we new are. stuff and coming up we do. with fun projects for you. <laughs> um, so once you get your pages downloaded, of course, you'll need some elements. We've got our heat and balm light, which yeah. we like to really, I really like my shapes to be down. They're set. So when you're stitching right. them down, they're not moving they're around. They're not moving. They're I like not that. pinned down. Yeah. They're down. They're down. Temporarily, yes, but they're down. They're down. Um, so for that reason, we like to use the heat and bomb light. If you're of the same uh, mindset that you like to use feasible webbing, you'll grab your tracing diagram and the heat and bond light. And this is where I really love to use my light box. I love the light boxes too. This is the way for one by daylight. I can, well, I can see it mm -hmm. when I turn the light on, I'm just like, ah, wow. feels, <laughs> it's good. It's very good. And this is such a nice size for this whole series. It is. You'll just use an ordinary pen. Don't think about using a friction pen because you will be heating this up. It's going to come and right off. And friction pen would disappear with the heat. You'll just trace directly on the line all of the shapes that are shown here on the tracing diagram. Roughly cut around each of those shapes. Find whatever wool that shape belongs to and you'll iron that to, if there is a back side of the mm -hmm. wool, you'll iron that onto the wool. And that's where you'll use your chi scissors to cut out directly on the line on and the precisely. Line. What you see is what you get. Exactly. So make sure you are cutting out precisely with a nice pair of sharp scissors. And we love the Kai for that very reason. With our background and our backing, this has got both a piece mm -hmm. for the background and the backing. Correct. We chose the cut right freezer paper. I love this freezer paper because of its thickness. It's, it's like nice. two to three times the thickness of freezer paper that I buy at the grocery at the store. store. That's right. So this is fabulous and very reusable. Mm -hmm. You will just trace that out. And once you iron that down and you cut around, you know, mm -hmm. you can just peel this off and keep you. This is well, this is our shape from March. That is the shape from we March. We didn't cut yeah, a new right. one we didn't for this do a video. New one. No, we did so not. So you'll cut two of those. Yep. One's for your background. Yes. One is for your backing. backing. That's right. Once you have all of your wool shapes cut out, that's where the applique pressing sheet, and again, that's where you'll be using the layout diagram at that point. And uh, I love the light, the illumination. It helps you know where to place mm -hmm. things. Perfect. Once I figure out, yep, that's where my body, the body of the bunny is, the ears, and then I just slide it over to my wool pressing mat mm -hmm. and iron everything down. Again, if if I know I zoomed through that quickly, but if you want to see that in more detail, that's why that kind of full video for March. You we'll can follow. always refer yeah. back to that, and that'll be at the end of this video. Perfect. So once everything's down, this is what it's going to look like moving mm -hmm. into now. You need to stitch everything down Stitchy. and That's all right. of our fun embroidery. That's so right. So take us on once that we journey. Now that we're prepared, <laughs> okay. take us to what, how I get to this. How do you get to this? How do I get to this? All I right. want to get to this. Okay. So we're going to add a few details. First of all, we, we have two separate thread sets 
every month now. Rather than lumping all of our thread sets together into one large one, I like we've that. broken them apart mm -hmm. into two. So they're they're optional. The first set is the 12 weight cotton set. I love this silky 12 weight cotton. This is amazing stuff. We had some people wanting to use the wool thread that we were using last year on their sewing machines. And you can't do that with wool thread. It's too fragile, yeah, it will break. it will break. But this 12 weight cotton runs just fine. As long as you make sure you use a size 100, a size 100 super non-stick needle. Right. This is the ticket right here. These are amazing needles. They go right through multiple layers. They don't get gummy. Mm. This is an amazing needle. Okay, so and pick those up if you're gonna do this by machine. All and right. they'll use a 50 weight cotton in the bobbin. In the bobbin. Okay. Yes. That so is that's correct. really only for the top. That's not the, the bottom top. too. Correct. Got now it. you can hand stitch with that as well. I like that. That's what we did. We were hand stitching and you can see our stitches on the back. Yep. We have hand stitched all of the all of this down with using the 12 weight cottons. Uh, then the embellishing threads, the fun Isn't part. My favorite. That's right, the fun part. That's the set of four right here. Now this month we did not include the black. Okay. Last month we did. We didn't do that because at the end of 12 months you would have purchased mm. 12 black spools of thread. Okay, You good don't point. need 12 black no. spools of thread. It you saves, just need one. Saves money. That's right. So you saves don't need you to be some buying money. it over and over again. That's right. Okay. But if you didn't pick up the March set and you need black thread, the size 8 pearl cotton, you can easily okay. grab that on our website. We have that available. Okay. Sounds good. All right. How do we do so, this? I how just, do we do this? I'm in love with this part. I love the stitching right here. Okay, so to do that, I like to mark a lane on here so that you can stitch this. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. One, you can just eyeball it and just mark it on there. Okay. A lot of us are not comfortable eyeballing things on there, and I understand that. I like precision. I know, I do too. <laughs> I like to use this cut right freezer paper. You've already got your template cut. It's this shape. So if you move this about 3 eighths of an inch away, and take a white marking pen and just make some dots here, here, and I am visually seeing 3 eighths of an inch. The other way to do this, Jen's way, is the precision way. I have to do it, guys. I know you do. Oh I gotta, because I'm used to looking <laughs> at a quarter of an inch That's for right. quilting, but three I'm eighths not used is to different, right? seeing 3 eighths. So what is 3 eighths? So I'm gonna go, Three eighths of an inch on my ruler is the third line. Okay. And I'm just gonna go from the edge and mark and move it around and mark, mark all the way around. So I have three eighths of an inch mark with my dots. Okay. Now just connect the dots. So again, I'm just using a white marking pen and it takes a minute to show up. It's a, a fuzzy line, a fuzzy white line takes a minute, you can draw over it a couple of times, and as this ink dries, there it goes, you can see it. Yeah, I think it's just kind of a couple seconds, you know, it maybe is. three, four seconds. It is, it takes it a second, it's not instant. What I like about that too is if she draws a line she didn't like where it was, you can either just oh, get it wet it and it'll disappear. Right, or iron it away, Okay, and it will take it away. Okay. We do iron it right off of wool and it comes right off. Okay. Okay, so once I have one line, I'm now, go to a quarter inch here. So now I'm just gonna draw a second lane and I'm just gonna echo what I have, just like this. You can see it's coming all around. Just draw a second lane here. This is just gonna give you a visual reference when you put this feather stitch down, okay? Now, quick question. Okay. Because I know we're kind of zooming ahead to get to that stuff. Would you, do you as a matter of habit, do the whip stitch and get everything down? Yes. Before yes. you start Absolutely. doing anything. Oh yeah, see we've got this completely down. Okay. We have whip stitched this whole thing down or machine stitched it. Gotcha. Either way, okay. whatever you prefer. Do that first. Okay. Everything's not moving, yep. no, nothing's going That's anywhere. That's correct. Okay. I use a friction pen to mark like his whiskers. Mm -hmm. We marked this. And again, we're gonna use a white pen and I'm just gonna mark some little tufts of grass. Just kind of a little placement lines if you need to. If not, we can easily 
do that with a straight stitch. Yeah, just kind okay. of visually just go exactly. for it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So let's look at needles. I'm going to be using a number 22 chenille needle. This is what we have. It is by Shabby Fabrics. It's from Primitive Gatherings. These are the number 22 chenille needles. They can be a little tricky to thread sometimes. Okay. When you're trying to put pearl cotton in there, yeah, I it's like thicker. this That's clover true. needle threader. It goes right in and it gives you a large wide area to put your thread. I love that. You don't even need your glasses, Jen, and you can do this. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I know, right? Where are those glasses? Right. Where's, who knows? Okay. If your thread's a little frayed on the end, use this thread magic. This stuff really is magic. And it will reduce the friction on your thread. It conditions it nicely. Yep, yep. it does. Feel that. And it just, it just brought all those rough ends right together and made them behave. You're going to be the boss of your thread, Tammy? That's right. You're going to be the boss of your thread. <laughs> That's right. It goes right in and threaded just that easy. I love that needle threader. Okay. So here we go. Let's do a straight stitch. So what I'd like to start with, let me clear an area here. We kind of got everything in posing here. Okay. So we're going to start over here is fine. And we're just going to do a long straight stitch for grass. That's all I want to do is just a long straight stitch. I'm just going to go down and come right back up. I'm just going to mimic a tufts of grass, right? So when you think about grass and how it grows, you come back to the bottom, bounce out, and just have fun with this. That's what I love about these projects. You can just do anything and it looks so cool. Mm-hmm. Right? It's really sweet. It is. And then maybe in a tuft of grass, you might see some blades that are a little shorter. There we go. You really can't do Just it like wrong. A, you can't Just do it wrong. have some creative you liberty. Can't. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so to tie your thread off, I'm just going to take some little whip stitches on the back. And I'm just going to stitch three little whip stitches rather than tying a bunch of knots. And that is going to definitely hold that embroidery right where I want it. Nice. Okay. Cute. All right. So then we would go ahead and we would do more stitches over here. Yep. We would also do a back stitch on his little paws, his whiskers, his mouth, and probably also on little French knots on his face. And I think okay. we covered that in March, did we? We did. Okay. Yeah. So can we refer We also back did to a that? stem stitch on here. Yes. You can maybe see that a little better yeah. on this one, but we did a stem stitch here. Right. So I'm not going to go over those stitches again, but they are referenced on our chart. So if you want to look them up in the book, mm. you're more than welcome to. All of our stitches that we are doing are in this Embroidery and Crazy Quilt Stitch Tool book by Judith Montano. This is the nicest book, Jen. I love it. I love it too. I love the how it stands up. Stands up. Like this? It does. Yes. You get your page, Flip and your you page. can just be referring to it That's as right. you're stitching. That's right. Especially if it's not a stitch you've done a lot before. That's right. And you just kind of have to How did that start again? Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of us just need a little visual reminder every now and then. And left and right handed. Yes. Isn't we listen nice? to you guys. Yes. So all the lefties Absolutely. are like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can exactly. thank her for doing That's this. That's right. She did a nice job with the book. Yes. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a feather stitch now, and that's just right down here. So that's why we have our two lanes on here. All right, so here we go. Let's start this stitch. We're going to come up at A. The book tells you, so I'm on this side of the lane. I'm, I'm over here. That's my far side. Loop your thread around, and we're going to come down. And back up like this. I'm going to make sure my thread goes underneath my needle. So it makes a little loop. See my little loop forming right yeah, there? Yeah. Okay, so now that one's on that side. So now I'm going to bounce to the other side of my lane. And I'm going to come straight across from where my thread comes up into this lane. 
back to the center of the lane again. You're always diving back to the center, whether okay. you're starting here or here. You're always going to go back to the center. Got it. All right. There's your next loop, and it just feeds it right together. We're going to go from this side of the lane now and dive back to the center, just like that. Ah. All the way around. From and the side Mark and the these lanes okay. just made all the difference in the world. It helped me keep my stitches very even. Right. It just, it made it so much easier to do this. Sure. It took all the stress out of it. Because if you're just trying to freehand this on there, yeah. you probably could. And I know there's a lot of good stitchers out there that can do that. But boy, I'll tell you, I need that visual. I just love that visual so I know right where I'm at. Isn't that a fun stitch? That's so pretty. And you just go, go, go. So then we thought, well, let's add a little color to that. I'm just going to unthread this and set it to the side. So I'm going to take my razzle, my dazzle thread. This is dazzle. And this thread can be a little squirrely. So you definitely, definitely want to use some thread magic on this. Mm. You want to make sure that thread is conditioned, that it's not going to be crazy on you. <laughs> <laughs> it can get there. All right, so I'm going to do a French knot, and I'm just going to come up at the very tip of my little thing. And we did two wraps on these. You're going to go right back down, hold your thread. I'm going to hold my thread. So I push that needle back through, kind of work it a little bit. There oh, we are. That's so perfect. Cute. And then I just jump down, jump down, and randomly pick another one. Let's put another pink one right here. It looks almost like little tiny rosebuds, it's doesn't adorable. it? It's adorable. It's just cute. It's just really sweet. I love that. Two wraps, and right back down again. Kind of work your needle a little bit to get it through there if you're pulling your thread a little tight. There we are. Just like that. Adorable. And then I came back with the purple ones just to throw a little purple vision in there. A little purple thread. Wow. That was it, it. It's amazing how it looks so complex, but when you break it down, it's much you drew simpler. your lanes so you can yep. stay where you're supposed to. That's now, right. what do you recommend? How do I get that off yes. of there? What would yeah, you, that's what would a good question. So there's a couple of different ways. Okay. You can get this wet with a little, like a washcloth. I okay. would use like a white washcloth, something uh, just damp, okay. and you can rub it. Or you can steam it. And if you, Jen, if you want to steam that with okay. the iron there. I think it's still warmed up okay. here. Okay. If you can steam that with the iron, it should take it right away. Move the book out of the way. Let's see here. I hear it's steaming. Let's see if it's gone. Okay. I want to be the boss. You want to be yeah. the boss of your iron? <laughs> I love this iron. I love that iron. <laughs> yep, it's gone. gone. Isn't right that there. great? It disappeared. And, and what I what I love about the wool pressing mat is notice how everything's still up on the surface. Yep, my stitches still you look like little roses. Them. That's right. Aww. We didn't squish anything. So Isn't fun. That nice? I'm having so much that. fun on this series. I so. love this series. Thank you for joining us, and I hope, you're having a, I hope you're having a good time. We'd love to get your feedback. Absolutely. And I hope you're learning some fun new stitches and that you jump into some hand embroidery. Oh, it's I easy. It's, it's a, a lot easier than you think. It is. All it right. Is. Well, we'll see All you right. next month. Bye.